Karen. Yes. Why are you laughing already? We just started. <laughs> I know you had that big sigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a deep one. Oh, okay. yeah. That, so let me get back to the question. Karen. Yes. Wouldn't it be nice to have all the answers? It would be very nice. I would t to be able to just tap into the wisdom of the cosmos and finally understand reality in its fullest. Yes. Hmm. If only we had a way to truly know and understand humanity's paradigm shift to a multidimensional experience mm -hmm. or the mechanics of reality or even the human blueprint. Ooh. What if there was someone who actually had access to all those answers and a lot more? Someone who would be willing to come onto our show and clear all the confusion about what humanity is going through right now? Then I bet you would have reached out to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? This episode is going to answer all those questions and a lot more, at least the questions we're going to have time for. Get ready, because this one is going to be cosmic. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully. We both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait. You joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Ladies and gentlemen, skeptics and seekers alike, get ready for an intriguing exploration into the realms beyond our everyday understanding. I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today we're honored to welcome Rebecca Dawson, an international consultant, a speaker, an author, whose journey into the metaphysical began with a spontaneous event at the tender age of 18, a moment that opened the door to a remarkable gift of channeling. Now, with over 25 years of experience, Rebecca brings out wisdom and teachings from various facets of source, including Masters Serapis Bay, St. Germain, and Kutumi. She serves as a beacon of enlightenment, delivering cutting-edge insights into humanity's paradigm shift towards a multi-dimensional experience. Having conducted over 2,000 channeled sessions and hosted tons of workshops, seminars, and retreats worldwide, Rebecca is also the author of four transformative books, The New Human Experience, The Game of Purpose, The Agreement, and, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but it, Fu, The Return of the Magnetic Human? <laughs> I'm sure she's going to correct us. That's right. Today, we delve into the mind-expanding insights and experiences of this extraordinary guest on the Skeptic Metaphysicians, Rebecca Dawson. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here with you. Oh, we're delighted to have you. And I now feel so unaccomplished. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It kind of makes you feel small, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Uh, Rebecca, first and foremost, I'm so sorry about the snafu, pardon the pun, on the book. How do you say that? Is it foo? That was perfect. It is foo. Ooh. Yeah, I, oh, was I, also, one. I was also <laughs> challenged with that one when it came through. <laughs> <laughs> right, because a part of me wanted to say it a different way. And I, I, I figured maybe just error on the side of caution. This is going to be exciting because we've talked a lot on the show about reality and the multidimensional experiences and things like that, but you actually have been able to tap into some of the most renowned uh, ma ascended masters to to tap into some of this wisdom and this knowledge. And you now have at your fingertips the answers to everything, right? Well, I love the way you frame that. It sounds wonderful. But <laughs> as we know, the more we know, the more we realize we don't know. So mm. I uh, have the great privilege and honor to be uh, a participant in bringing these views forward. As humanity's consciousness shifts, we get a slightly different view that opens us up into reality because, as you know, our, our human minds can only grasp so much at a certain time. So mm. uh, I'm as curious about it as you are. <laughs> well, this is going to be great then because there's a lot of curiosity going on. I guess, first and foremost, let's just put it out there. You are not a trans channel. You are fully conscious as you bring the information across. And perhaps uh, a little bit later in the show, we might be able to tune into something like that um, mm -hmm. uh, on the show, which would be great. But I want to call out something you just said, that our mind can't comprehend the true reality of, uh, of us, for lack of a better word, right, of, of, one, of our oneness. Why do you think that is? Why can't we comprehend it? 
Well, I think there's a couple of different different factors involved here. One is the way that we've been taught to use our minds and our brains through our childhood and through our education and conditioning is through the absorption of information. And when we absorb information, we're only absorbing what's already available within the collective conscious field of humanity. Whereas more and more of what's becoming available to us is coming up from within and out. So the human mind naturally will reject something that's coming from within in favor of something that's already sitting in the external reality. So that's one reason it's hard to bring in anything new unless you have something with in your memory system already to reference it against or check it against, which is why so many people, when they have amazing spiritual experiences or they, they perceive something profound in a meditative state, unless they have some reference for it in their memory system or somewhere in the external, it's very easy to either reject it or forget it completely if the mind can't reference it to something. So that's one reason. And the other reason is that we are taught to use our minds in a very linear fashion, which means that everything's about moving towards into the future or referencing it from history. And most of the concepts we're discovering about reality and what we are really as beings and as cosmic beings has, has so much scope beyond linearity that our minds are only glimpsing one small sliver of, of what is actually occurring in any given moment. Well, well, getting back to the the first reason you gave, I can kind of understand also people not trusting that they're just not making something up. Um, so that being said, I want to know, the, all of a sudden you had an event that all of a sudden you were able to channel. Is that, that, yes. that correct? Like what, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> can I have that event? <laughs> I'm not sure if you want it. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a very good point, Will, because it's, it wasn't so much the, the cataclysm of that occurring, it was, it was what happened afterwards and, and how do you assimilate that and make sense of that in your life. So for me, I, I had always had a, a metaphysical interest as a child. So I was the kid that was in the library at lunchtimes looking at unexplained mystery books and, and, and things like that because it always was always innate within me that there had to be more than this. It can't, it doesn't make sense to me that this is it. So I was always interested in, in metaphysics and I started meditation classes when I was very young, but I never thought about, <laughs> I never thought that that was something that I could relate to or had anything to do with me because my concept of being a channeler was, you know, much older men and women dressed in white, wearing big crystals. Um, you know, in spiritualist churches doing interesting trance things. And I thought, <laughs> well, that's definitely not for me. Smelling um, of patchouli. <laughs> right. So um, it occurred for me very spontaneously when, when I was um, 17, 18, around that year. Um, and I was just, I, I'd always been very adept at being able to give advice to people if they were in a bit of a pickle. So someone came to me for some advice and I was sitting there with them. And all of a sudden, my energy expanded so much. I felt like the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. And, and my, my voice changed. And all, I just started bringing forth all of this information about past life experiences of this person while they were going through what they were going through. And uh, it seemed like just a few minutes and an hour had gone by. That was the beginning. <laughs> what was their reaction? Well, um, luckily it was someone that I was quite close to. So they were just like, whoa. And they were sitting there writing everything down. Um, they were really blown away by it. And uh, mm. it was me, I think, that had a bit of a challenge moving forward mm. with that. Now, you, you mentioned <laughs> that your voice changed and things like that. So when you channel, uh, not being a trans channel, do you still sh make that shift or has that subsided? It has subsided a bit. My whole view of channeling has changed since I began. Like everything, belief informs our experience. So because my earlier experiences was, well, there's, you know, my understanding is that there's other entities that are outside of you that come into you. That was my experience of it. And over the years, moving more deeply into an understanding of a unified consciousness and unity consciousness, I now... Um, speak quite often and teach people that to channel it's actually going deep within and bringing an aspect out, which makes the process far more seamless. You don't get the physical disruptions. Uh, it, it integrates far more nicely into your own wisdom and knowledge system. 
yeah, a lot I, less I, traumatic, I'm sure. Less traumatic and more natural. And, and it's not something that you have to acquire or that only special people get to do. If you understand mm. how it really works, anyone can mm. access anything. I'm not sure about anyone, but <laughs> <laughs> the fascinating, well, there's so many fascinating things about you, but one of the fascinating, most fascinating things about you is we could actually have separate interviews about all the different aspects that you touch on. We can have an entire episode just on your channeling alone, and maybe perhaps in the future we will. However, what I'm most interested in this time is talking about this paradigm, this shift we're all, I mean, you hear the buzzwords, right? We're all shifting from mm -hmm. 3D to 5D. Oh, first of all, let's set the table and explain what exactly, when people say we're moving into the 5D, what the heck does that mean? Well, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to even hear people talking about it because we started bringing it through back in the 2000s and it oh, was wow. such, a, I had to really suspend all of my beliefs to even be able to bring this wisdom through because it was so far beyond anything that I could understand at the time. And, and, and we can see now how it's, how it's emerged in the collective field and so many people talking about it, which is wonderful. But in essence, it's about expanding the spectrum of vibrational frequency that we're sitting in so that we can have access to more experience, more sensory capacity, more of the beingness of ourselves. In a very simple way, we would say that moving from 3D, 4D into 5D means that we're no longer bound to a blueprint of set experience. And that's an interesting concept because a lot of people think, well, we have all of this free will and all of this choice, but we also know that in third dimensional reality, we also have history that informs us. We also know that we have memory. We have what people call karma or past life experiences. We have genetic imprints. And, and this in itself is a whole belief system which has made repetition the flavor of human experience where we go through the same things over and over and over again. So the shift out of that and into this dimensional reality is giving humanity again the opportunity to actually create our blueprints create new experiences for all of humanity, have a completely different set of possibilities that we couldn't see or experience before. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very brief explanation, moving from set patterns into creation. So it's not like this, we're in the 3D, right? The, that's the, the second dimension is a line, for example, right? So it's flat. Three-dimensional three is, as we know, you put on your 3D glasses mm -hmm. and things come that has depth. So 4D, 5D, uh, not necessarily in the physical realm we're talking about, it's more vibrational and frequencies. Is that right? Well, everything is vibration and frequency. How well, we yes, reference it is in good point. materiality yeah. in 3D. So once we move fourth dimensional reality is what we see as the cap or the membrane or the ceiling of our third dimensional earth reality. And that's time. And that's that loop that brings us around and around and around. So once we supersede time, which is why so many people are interested in being in the now moment and in presence, because mm. that's when we move beyond that fourth dimensional loop, time loop, we move into fifth dimensional reality, which is now the creation state, which means that we now are no longer bound by time and we are able to accomplish more, vision more and manifest far more easily without that sense of process and laborious time that's involved. So as this shift happens, is it kind of everyone at the same time or like one guy and then someone over here? And, you know, <laughs> I, I just, and who I'm picks? Curious. Who right. picks who goes first? <laughs> <laughs> See, now you made me forget the rest of my question. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, anyways, that part. Does, does everyone shift at the same time well, or are some people able to have all of these experiences and other people just aren't there? Well, that's a great question. I think if we start to look at humanity as a collective, it helps us to understand how this works far more easily because as a wave moves, there's certain parts of the wave that peak before the rest of it. And those mm. that are like the scouts or the lookouts and the rest of it comes along. So of course there, are a, there is a proportion of humanity that's awakening to all of this. And they are the ones that are now creating the blueprints and belief systems for the wave that follows. So another thing that people often talk about with this earth shift or, or paradigm shift 
is that perhaps there's two earth, there's an old earth and a new earth. And this is a, in the, in the beginning, when we first started hearing about this, a really easy way for people to think, well, we're moving to something different and we're having to leave things behind. In essence, what we're leaving behind is our limitation and mm. our sense of identity and role as we begin to move into something new. So it's not like a rapture where suddenly you wake up and everybody, half the world is gone. It's just that you're, you're shifting vibrational levels and you, your reality right. is a little different. Right. right. So as you shift vibration, you shift into a different version of reality. So of course there will be people and loved ones that perhaps you're moving out of resonance with. So they begin to disappear and these ties in your life go, but it makes space for people who are in resonance with you. So we're moving into a more coherent experience where we're not just tied to people because of history or because of obligation and duty and assigned roles. We're actually now creating connections based on vibrational resonance, which is going to, of course, create a more harmonious experience of humanity. I was just going to ask you, how is that going to change? And so if everyone's changing kind of at different times, I guess I thought it was just going to be this like kind of all of a sudden thing, but it sounds like it's going to be more of a gradual shift. Is that Well, right? it is a gradual or... shift, but let's explain it in a slightly different way. Because instead of a linear shift from here to here, if we look at everything mm -hmm. as vibration and energy, third dimensional vibration encompasses a certain bandwidth, like a radio frequency of possibility and experience. And we all experience each other in there. As you become more conscious, your bandwidth actually widens. So you now can see more. There's more opportunity and possibility for you. But that third and fourth dimensional bandwidth still exists there. And so people that become more conscious and expand in their consciousness can now embrace and accept and love unconditionally everything that's sitting in those, in those narrower bandwidths. So in essence, we're not moving from light to dark necessarily or positive to negative or from one end of the spectrum to another because that's linear, that's one line. We're actually expanding the bandwidth of the line to encompass everything. So there are those that will expand faster than others so that there are new things for people to discover once they begin to move out of that limited range of perception. And this is where the innovators and the, the real thought leaders are sitting on those outer, outer layers of the bandwidth. So how can someone prepare themselves? Let's say someone... Uh, asking for a friend, wanted to be one of the ones that expanded quicker than others. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not sure why you're laughing at me. But, uh, uh, this is a very good friend I'm asking about. <laughs> this is just such a you question. <laughs> I want to do it really fast right yes, away. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but 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 thankfully it's a friend. It's not me. Oh, so yes. so uh, if someone wanted to ex uh, prepare themselves or help themselves to the expansion quicker, oh. uh, can someone do anything to to get themselves more aligned with that thought process? Well, there's a lot of I mean, there's a lot of thought around that, and there's a lot of people I know that are doing great things with encouraging people to eat well. You know. Um, be mindful of their emotions and their thoughts. Our view is a little bit different from that because we tend to take the macroscopic view. We tend to sit on the outside looking in. And what we would say is that the shift is happening anyway. You can't really accelerate the shift. It's happening. Mm -hmm. What you can do is give yourself permission to relax into it and know that as we begin to expand, you're not going to move into a place where everything becomes very harmonious and regulated and now I know where I'm doing and now I know where I'm going. The opposite is true. As you start to expand, you're going to move between feeling like a human that's in fear and anxious and on in other moments feeling completely elevated and I'm not really worried about anything or attached to anything. So the more we try and stick to consistency and the more we try to place ourselves where we think we should be, actually the less available we are to the shift. Interesting. Okay. So let's say that this friend of mine <clears throat> um, is really conscious about following the path or being open, but <clears throat> finds themselves losing track, getting back into the 
uh, rat race, for lack of a better word, focusing suddenly on the three-dimensional, on success, on work, on the day-to-day. Are you saying that if 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 I focus, if my friend focuses on uh, work constantly and doesn't pay any uh, more attention than others in enlightening aspects, that person will still shift or is that going to delay the shift because they're not focused on awareness and openness and are instead focusing on the three-dimensional world? Well, we can't delay the shift. The question is how comfortable do you want to get with it? And what you'll discover is it's becoming more and more difficult to stay consistently focused on anything. So even if your friend wanted to consistently get involved with work and success, that would be disrupted quite often. And you'll move out of, you move into disillusionment with that and then go into the, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't want to be doing any of this anymore. And so you start to pulse in and out. So it's, it, it's like fighting an inevitable expansion. You can't stay focused on one thing for too long. And this is what happens when you become more multidimensional. You start to focus on many different things. But our idea of human success is all being geared into consistency and regulation and a particular direction or path. In fifth dimensional reality, there is no path. It's about getting off the path, getting out into mm-hmm. the fields, that's where all the seeds of potential are. Sounds like being a mother. You can't focus on anything. Everything's happening at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control any of it. <laughs> That's exactly right, because we're birthing a new reality for humanity. Oh. So Ooh. we're not supposed to be consistent. We're not supposed to know what we're doing. If we think we know what we're doing, we're playing along a blueprint or a memory pattern or a set of experiences that already exists and it's already being done. Wow. And this is about being pioneers. So we're not supposed to know what we're doing. I never know what I'm doing. So then the thought that is out there that says that those that are sowing division, perhaps it's because they're feeling the vibrational shifts and are very uncomfortable at it because of it and are lashing out, do you think? Well, there's two, really two different pathways to expansion in the human reality because we exist in a realm of duality. So the first is what we are really used to, which is conflict, tension, friction, and, and transformation and expansion from there. And then there's peace, grace, relaxation, and expansion from there. But how many humans do you know move into expansion through a sustained state of peace and grace? Um, a can- couple, handful? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe one or two. Right, like, like Gandhi? Maybe none. Uh, well, <laughs> or maybe none. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So to, yeah. as, as a humanity, we have the option to evolve through either one of those experiences. But what we're so conditioned and used to believing is that it takes hard work, practice, grind conflict in order to come to a resolution and and evolution. And so that's what we experience. So there's heightened conflict and tension going on on the planet right now. And this is going to continue in the next few years because there is such a rapid expansion and evolution for human consciousness happening right now. That's the way that a lot of humanity is going to choose to do it because there is an inherent belief that says, if it's not hard, it's not good. If it's not hard, it's not worth doing. And we do that to ourselves. We do that to ourselves. I'm not doing enough. I hear so many conscious people saying, I should be working harder. I should be more productive. What am I bringing to the world? Because they're not used to doing it from a state of relaxation. So I got to ask the question, because it sounds an awful lot like you're saying that the conflict is really the direction we need to walk in. Is that right? Or can you find your way into 5D by non-attachment or not getting involved with the conflict, not being part of it? You can, but as Karen said before, you know, when we were talking about, does everyone move at once? Does everyone, is it one at a time? There are those that are going first that are doing it from a state of peace. And there are many who are hanging on, who are going to do it through a state of conflict but the shift is inevitable. Which one would you recommend? <laughs> well, I, I know I oscillate between both states. 
as a human, I know we all do, I would, I remind myself it doesn't have to be hard, relax into it and go through it in a state of peace. But it also means that I'm not focused on the conflict and tension that's happening in the world as necessarily a, a problem to be solved. We're looking at it from the state of awareness of the masters. We're looking at it as it's a push through into an expanded consciousness. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know if we've ever heard someone say it quite like that, Karen. That could be a hard pill to swallow for the people that are in the middle of the conflict, the people that are in, you know, the Ukraine or Gaza. Gaza. I mean, you know, they can say, oh, sure, you relax. <laughs> You're Absolutely. not getting bombed. <laughs> so, Absolutely. so what do you say to them? Absolutely. And it's, it's with our compassion and our ability to embrace, embrace and love everyone and to not to see, take sides or see right as wrong, but seeing humanity playing itself out to expand itself into a new era. So, and I have friends who are right in the middle of the conflict and they mm -hmm. are doing their best to sit in peace and compassion and non-judgment. And that's incredibly difficult to do. Mm. Incredibly say, yeah. difficult. So much love and compassion and respect for anyone who is sitting in, um, a, you know, a situation of war or conflict. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's hard not to judge. Period. Much less when there's conflict like that involved. But it sounds like what you're saying is it goes along the line with what we've also heard in other conversations, where the key is to just surrender, surrender, and allow the process to play itself out and with the path of least resistance or no? Well, I, th I think if we really encompass that it's happening at such a great cosmic level, this earth shift, it, it's inevitable that it's occurring. There's nothing that we can do to stop it. It's a question of how do you align yourself with it so you can be the best version of yourself with it. And that's benefiting everyone then. That's benefiting all of humanity. Because how you show up in it, of course, is the imprint that you're leaving in this world. We need to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to turn our attention more to human capabilities. Uh, you mentioned there's new human capabilities are emerging during this time of transition. And you talk a little bit about new children and how they're different. We'll, we'll touch on that. And then we'll also maybe we'll see if we can get some of the Senate Masters to come through. Great. We'll be right back right after these messages. Welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. We are talking with Rebecca Dawson, who is absolutely blowing our minds. I know I say that a lot, but this time we are really getting our minds blown because we're talking about the shift from 3 to 5D and what that all entails and the best move forward and things like that. Now, before we left, Rebecca, we had talked about the shift that we're undergoing. And you mentioned on your site that there are new human capabilities or capacities actually mm -hmm. is a better word new human capacities that are coming out during this time of transition w what exactly do you mean by that well because we've only been able to sense our reality from a third dimensional perspective as we start to expand our consciousness and awareness we begin to sense it completely differently and feel it completely differently and with that it begins to expose to us the real sensorial capacities that our physical body has and what our bodies are actually really designed to do. So, of mm. course, as consciousness shifts, we have to be able to sense reality differently. So there are many different functionalities that are starting to come online in the human body. Like what? So the way in which we um, smell and taste things is changing, which Ooh. is super interesting. We have an ability now to hear well beyond the current audio, audio range of frequency. So people are starting to hear, a lot of people getting ringing in their ears, starting to hear sounds and uh, different nuances of sound that's beginning to happen. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You change, you shift vibrationally, you expand vibrationally, your frequency gets expanded. And so of course, your senses will expand. That makes sense. Yes. Is that where psychic senses and things like that come from then? Yes. It's, they're beginning to really emerge. You'd call them psychic senses. Our visions, our visions are a really common one. Now I speak to people all over, all over the world every week and people are starting to see colors that they didn't know existed and they have a difficult time describing. Oh, they're just flashing, wow. flashing somewhere 
in the room and it's like, oh, there was this color and I don't really know how to describe it. It's a mix between this and this and it's very fluorescent. So there's a real fluorescent nature to it and a lot of people are talking about that right now. Wow. Um, wow. Skin and skin sense is one of the big things that's changing. Scientists are going to discover more in the years ahead about how important skin is and what an intelligent organ it is. It's actually the interface between our inner reality and our external reality, and it has a lot of sensors on it. So our, mm. we're beginning to actually sense and feel the nature of reality with our skin. So mm. a lot of people are having, it started out with waves of goosebumps that were people were having um, when there is vibrational resonance or when certain things are about to appear in your reality, um, mm -hmm. feeling heat and cold very differently. A lot of people are having heat running through their body and uh, it, it changing the way the skin feels. We've had rashes, a lot of things like that. So everything's mm. starting to come online because the vibrational environment we're, we're, that we're living in is changing. So everything's waking up and beginning to be used in a slightly different way. Wow. In the book, I'm reading right now a book called Oneness. And in the book, it talks about as we shift into a new reality, we're going to find more species going extinct because of vibrational frequencies don't match our new vibrational frequencies. It's not that they're going extinct, but they're, they're transitioning to the old earth, whereas we're transitioning to the new. And we're going to be finding new species that are being discovered. And lo I mean, literally the day after I read that passage in that book, they found this new, I think it's a lizard that they found somewhere. Uh, now I have, I'm absolutely muffling this completely because I don't, I don't even remember where they found it, but, uh, <laughs> but is, is that, is that in alignment with what yeah. your thought process? Yes. Is? Yes. We've been saying this since, since around 2010, that new species will be discovered because as our senses and awareness expands into, into a broader frequency of reality, we're going to be able to see and perceive things that we couldn't before. So it's like looking through a very narrow passageway and or lens and having the aperture of that lens widen. And now we can start to see and experience all these other things. It may seem that some things are disappearing, but it's also that our vision is now becoming more focused in a broader way that those things like other species still continue to exist, but they're not existing within the bandwidth of vibration that we are viewing. It's like the frequencies of light that we can see and can't see, like infrared or something like yes. that. Yes. That's, that's wild. Yes. It? So how can you distinguish when it's that or when it's pollution killing off the animals? Because a lot of people would say this is what it is. But Well, everything within third dimensional reality exists within a paradigm of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. So when something happens, our minds naturally say, well, what caused that to happen? Whereas okay. when you start to look in a broader sense, there is just one conscious experience creating and manifesting itself and fractalizing itself in a multitude of ways. So it, you tend to look less at cause and you tend to look more at what is happening yeah. and what is going are, to happen next. Some of these concepts are really difficult to look at because it makes it, I don't want to say it's cold or dispassionate, but the reality is what it is. But it, 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 to, to your point, Karen, when someone might use this as an excuse to, well, let's just keep polluting because then, you know, it's just us changing our perspective. At the end of the day, everything is divine. Everything's happening exactly as it's supposed to. Everything is perfect, right? So even the pollution, as much as we don't want it, it's really part of the plan or is that not what we're talking about here? Well, there are certain, certainly, as we suggested in, in, part of the third dimensional blueprints for reality is we have the same experiences recycled over and over and over and over again. And we have certainly had, I think that from what I remember the master saying, this is the fifth cycle of a similar set of experiences for humanity, where humanity reaches a certain perceived peak of technological or advancement and in essence, turns in on itself and destroys itself. So we've, we've been here before <laughs> uh, and it is part of a pattern. So, but this is the first time there's been a shift beyond it. It's that, that's why it's so important and why so many um, channelers around the world and, and spiritual teachers are talking about it because it's the first time we actually have the opportunity to supersede the blueprint, to actually move beyond it. 
So yes, there's no there's no um, denial that humanity has is creating an awful lot of destruction, and is out of balance with the Earth's reality. We we tend to look at it from why is this happening at a bigger scale? What is the patterning and the blueprint behind this where humanity keeps doing the same things over and over again? Why can't we get past that? Why can't we evolve past that self-destruction cycle? And this is where we're at. This is the cusp now. It's not going to continue for humanity because it's been done so many times before and it can't continue. Consciousness wants to evolve. Oh. God, I've got so many more questions. No, like I don't know if I should be afraid or excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 frightening. Mm. It's frightening, certainly, when we're so wired to predictability and knowing what's going to happen. And history says this, therefore, the future is this. We mm. we have come to become conditioned to be very comfortable with predictability and and repetition. But actually, the nature of life and the nature of consciousness is the opposite of that. If you look at the cosmos and how it's designed, it's, it's more chaos than order in many ways. And, and it's just the human mind likes to be able to predict and control. So it's frightening to think that we don't know what's going to happen. But it's also mm-hmm. exciting to think, well, I wonder what else is possible. So then it's mm-hmm. also, it's also it takes a modicum of release of control to be able to shift into the 5D. Hmm. Because really, what do we really control in our <laughs> that's very true we can very true. we can control our perception maybe yep. how we look at things <laughs> let's shift a little bit to the new children everyone's talking about this new generation coming through who are so different and so much more in tune with those vibrational frequencies that we're trying to aspire to what makes them so different are they amazing well the yeah. first thing we notice about these younger generations coming through is that they don't like control and they don't like order and they don't like regulation and they don't like having to focus on one thing for too long. There's been a lot of more recent diagnosis in children with attention difficulties and behavioural difficulties. Mm-hmm. And I know I've certainly been through that in my own experience as a parent. If you begin to look at the way in which this dimensional reality operates, it's multidirectional all the time. Nothing's meant to be consistent. It's a huge creation period where you could be interested in this and then this and then this and then this and then this and and you can't see any order in it or any connection in it. But when it all starts to bloom, it all becomes interconnected and one thing. So younger children now, they have less of a desire to be consistent and move in a particular direction or path. They have less desire to do things in a regulated way. The more spontaneous you can be with children, the more you can ignite their true sense of self and they can really surprise you with what they come out with. They have incredible senses, much like the senses we've been talking about. They tend to be more what we call psychic because their senses are already adapted and wired to the life experience they're going to have. And they're, you know, we're sitting in the middle of this shift now on the cusp of this shift. They're coming into it. So they're already wired really for what's ahead. And they like to ask a lot of questions. Gosh, that as parents makes the situation kind of difficult because you want to guide your children, but if they're actually more evolved, evolved than we are, <laughs> maybe they should be guiding us. Mm. Well, I agree. It's very <laughs> difficult because especially if we're used to being raised with, you know, regulation and rules and this is how you keep your children safe. I think mm. one of the most important things we can do for, for children is, is to really honor the wisdom within them and teach them how to listen to the voice within because their consciousness is always going to guide them in the best possible way they have mm. something innate within them that's like a gps and mm. then there's all the societal constructs and rules of what you should or shouldn't be doing so to always say well this is this is what you're supposed to be doing or this is what the rules are or what the expectation is what does that inside you say and that way they learn to become very self-guided early and also learn how to negotiate with the external rules and environment too, because they still have to live within a system to a certain mm-hmm. extent. I do want to see if we can usher in some of the, the masters, but one question before we do that, because it struck me when I was doing research into you, and this is about talking about your latest book, mm-hmm. uh, Foo, The Return of the Magnetic Human. 
You mentioned that Fu invites us to return the natural law and magnetic design of humanity while revealing the construct and coding for introduced systems of order that have become the foundation of a simulated Earth reality. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> In a couple of minutes? Uh, I'm going to say, this is not a short answer question. No, no, yeah, this, I'll do my best. We, we may need to split this into two shows. <laughs> <laughs> So because we're used to viewing ourselves and experiencing ourselves in a linear, re linear reality, if we look at third-dimensional reality almost like a grid system or a grid structure, we can look at how we move energy around the planet in terms of how we contribute energy, how we receive energy as a grid system. And so we have this paradigm where if I put in a lot of effort, I'm going to receive something. I put something into the grid, I get something back. And and in a similar way, we progress in a very sequential, linear way through life. I go from this step to this step to this step. It also suggests that you are part of a connection or a network. And if one part of that network or connection breaks down, everything breaks down. You don't get the due that you have. It, it's not an equal give and take, let's say. Mm. It's not an equal give and take. As we know, the law of the universe is, you know, as you express, you receive. And this is, this is denoted in so many different religious and philosophical texts. So I, we look at that almost like an electrical grid system. And that's where all beliefs lie. If you don't participate, you don't get to receive. If you don't get up and do your work every day, you don't survive. You don't progress. You can't be here. If you don't have a role to play within that, you're invalid. So once we start to expand our consciousness we start to remember the magnetic truth of ourselves and magnetics are self-sustaining it was like a toroidal system within ourselves we don't need to be part of the grid that we have to keep donating energy to in order to continue our survival here so much of what we believe we need to do to survive here is based upon a belief in a requirement to participate in a system if we don't participate within that belief system or that energy transference system, we cannot survive here. Is that really true? Are we really sovereign as humans? Do we need to keep donating energy in order to survive? Interesting, isn't it? It doesn't even begin the cover. <laughs> <laughs> These shades of the matrix, right? You got to unplug. Stop right. giving your energy to the machines. Oh my God, I need to talk to you for at least another three hours. Uh, I've got so many more questions, but we promised the audience. So I do want to see if by, by chance, some of the masters might be willing to come out and, and say hello. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just dive in and see what it is uh, to be expressed, unless you have a specific question. Uh, no, I'd love to hear what they have to say. I might have follow-up questions afterwards. Sure. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Greetings to you. We are with you. Your curiosity, of course, is the signature energy that will allow humanity to thrive and to flourish far more easily during this tumultuous experience of change. Curiosity is what allows you to become non-attached to what you already know. Curiosity also is the hallmark of the children that you have in your midst. They are not so satisfied with what is already on display. They want to know what else is possible. And so, of course, if the question here is, how can humans become more comfortable in what is occurring within your reality? We would say to you, remain curious, because it is the spark of life within you that enables you to be able to create more. Furthermore, as many of you are asking in this moment, how is it that I can bring comfort to others? Again, curiosity is the key. Because if you can remain curious, that sense of euphoria can begin to be felt by others. So they too can become curious about what else is possible in their lives. Is that not why you are creating this conversation and why you do what you do? Because you are igniting curiosity, and that is the spark of life. It is the nature of consciousness itself. The cosmos does not expand other than to satiate its own curiosity. It is the nature of who you are 
that humans have forgotten what their nature is. So you're saying that human nature is curiosity, but we've heard that human nature is, the, the true nature of humanity is love. Is that at odds with each other? Well, we would say that love is the state at which humans feel that they are in peace and that they are in acceptance and can embrace all things. We would say that love is the crucible, is the platform from which curiosity arises. Because it is when you are at ease with yourself that the curiosity is there. And that is the life essence. That's what propels you forward and out into experiencing more. Love is a very restful, receiving, embracing platform from which curiosity arises. It is the flame within the crucible is the curiosity within the state of love. Because if you are not in a state of love, curiosity does not feel like a spark of life. It feels like a fervent desire to solve a problem. And it feels like anxiety. How do you awaken curiosity if it has kind of died within you? Well, we would not say that it has died because it is always innate. What we would say is you have not given yourself permission to be in a state of not knowing. Because the value that has been placed upon you is you have the answers you know. You know how to manage the situation. You know how to avoid danger. You know how to service others' needs and so on. And so when knowing becomes your value, it's very challenging to give yourself permission to sit in the space of not knowing. Because when you're in the space of I don't know, suddenly the universe opens within you and curiosity and newness can arise. That's why children are such wonderful creators because they know that they don't know and they enjoy not knowing. And yet your education system saturate them with knowledge so that the curiosity begins to diminish. So how do you counteract that? With all the systems that we have on the world that we've made, uh, to, to your point, uh, we've made an order of, of everything because we need order in, in this three-dimensional world we're living in. How do you counterbalance the oversaturation and the institutions that we've created? Well, it's all about balance, as you have so succinctly stated. You live within a reality you call the earth reality. There is much to discover and learn there. But equally, you are here to create reality. And therefore, one must know their environment before they then begin something new within it. Otherwise, you would be all creating different worlds that would not harmonize with each other and therefore transform humanity as a whole. It is a balance between knowing that this is what I understand to be in the external reality, but am I also paying attention to my internal reality? This is the external knowledge and wisdom. Am I also paying attention to the internal knowledge and wisdom? And to be to be supplementing external knowledge with internal knowing is incredibly important for the evolution of humanity. There is so much more yet to be delivered into this world. How do things arrive in your reality? They arrive through you. Agree? You are the portals between the unseen and the seen. The mother gives birth to the child. Life arrives through you. Agree? Ideas are birthed into the world. They arrive through you. You are a portal into this reality. Therefore, the balance between investigating the reality that is being projected and also fostering and nurturing and expressing what is emerging from the very depths of you, that is how you balance and create a balanced world. What would you say is our number one challenge moving forward? Your number one challenge moving forward is to be at ease and acceptance of yourselves. Because almost every human that we converse with has great aspiration and great desire for improvement, for expansion, for peace, for harmony. But the great battle is in within oneself. Because you are not at peace with your experience as dualistic beings. 
You believe you must be one thing and not the other. You believe you must be illuminated but not confused. You believe you must be subservient but also in control. And so it's very important for you to relax into knowing that as a human, in, in reality, you are oscillating in and out of this reality many millions of times per your linear second. You are pulsing in and out of this reality. This is the truth of your existence, and your physicists are beginning to discover it also. Your cells pulse in and out of this reality. And so therefore, you are not consistently this, and yet you expect yourselves to be in consistency. So the more you can sit in the I don't know, the more you can experience yourself in that freedom and realize that in every single moment that you can perceive, it's an opportunity for you, new, 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 rather than consistency, repetition. This is who I am. This is how I behave. Humans are very uncomfortable with change. So when we're pulsing in and out of this reality, now I'm so curious. We're in here. When, we're, when we pulse out of it, where are we? You're in the great expansion of the cosmos, in the all, in the one. And that, that is what humans experience when you have the end of your linear, linear experience and you move back into the peace of the one. That is the love. That is the expansion. That is the relief. Oh, that is the release. That is the, the essence of yourself you feel just before you awaken and, and just as you are falling asleep. So those moments when you feel bliss during a deep meditation, for example, or your consciousness is expanded, is that what you're accessing? Yes, because when your consciousness is expanded in that way, you actually feel yourself in that state of wholeness or oneness and simultaneously within this reality. Now it is the masterful, expanded, conscious human that can feel themselves in both. Can you live in both at the same time without pulsing in and out? You are living in both at the same time. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> of course you did, because you already know. The question is, how can, you, how can your mind become aware of it? What's interesting is your body is already becoming aware of it, because your body is always, all, always feeling quite strange recently, agree? It's becoming mm. deregulated. Sleep patterns are being interrupted. Temperature patterns are being interrupted. Hormonal patterns are being inter interrupted because the consistency of your simulated reality is no longer being recognized by your consciousness. Your senses are now superseding the containment of that limited view. And soon your minds will begin to catch up if you actually pay attention to what your senses are telling you. See, you keep using the term simulated reality and it keeps grabbing my attention because to me, simulation is, uh, there's a simulation theory, right? That, that this is all fake, that this is all just a, a virtual reality game. Is that what you're talking about here? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's how you understand holographic reality to be within your limited spectrum of sciences. If you understand the nature of the cosmos, Everything is a holographic projection or a fractalization of the one. And so even within your personal experience, everything you are experiencing is a fractalization of the essence of your particular vibration and frequency. The question is, how do you create a harmonious <laughs> humanity? How is it that humans can actually begin to create individual realities that begin to harmonize? And that's when you begin to supersede a dualistic experience of your world. Oh my God, I need so much more time with you. You talked about <laughs> individual realities, right? That brings up a whole other rabbit hole that we can go down. Thank you so much for coming and speaking with us. I need to release you and, and, and start speaking with Rebecca again because we're quickly running out of time. But is there anything, any last minute wisdom that you feel important to impart to the audience right now? Yes, relax. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to control it. It is as it is, as it is. Be like children. Be opening, open to discovering how it really is. I am curious once again to be in this world. Any limitations we should put on ourselves? We're regarding that question with humor. 
because not <laughs> even you believe that that's true. Yes, but we will humor you and we will give you permission to not have limitations if that is what you require at this point. Okay. Yes, very well. It is our joy to be with you. Be curious. Thank Please you be very with much. You. Thank you. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So full disclosure, we've had several channelers on the show and it always feels weird talking to you, not being you. Oh, right? okay. However, I found myself getting that it was you. Does that make sense? Right. It, yes. it, I was, it was, it was, it was, I was perfectly fine having the dialogue with mm -hmm. whoever it was that came through without thinking this is Rebecca channeling when we spoke to other channelers i'm conscious of this is someone that's channeling something uh -huh. whereas with you it was like it was i was having a conversation with whoever it was i was talking to it was remarkable oh, i loved it thank oh, you i'm glad it was relaxing for you i think because i've been doing it for for so many years it's so integrated and also my view is that i just dive in and it's another branch of the cosmos coming out so it's not such a it's not such a market shift in energy Thank well, you for your this, amazing this... questions. Gee, there were some big ones in there, though. Um, uh, I <laughs> had a lot ones more than you asked. Show. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to get as many of my good in there. Well, I'm always available well, to, to chat more. So um, if you feel inclined to have another conversation, I'd be delighted. Oh, we'd love it. I, I truly, I would absolutely love it. So um, Great. no sooner do we uh, hang this call up that we're going to need to connect with you again. Great. This was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking the time and talking with, you, with us. If someone wants to reach out to you, and I know that you're not currently doing private sessions. However, if someone can reach out to you with questions or to connect with you somehow, what's the best way for someone to do that? Um, just my website, which is my name, RebeccaDawson.com. I've got lots of free content on there to explore and a YouTube channel as well, but you can find that through the website too. Great. Great. <laughs> uh, and also your four books. We're going to add links to all of that in our show notes. So if you'd like to go to SkepticMetaVision.com, go to her episode page and you'll find all those links directly it in there in the show notes or on our website or on the blog so rebecca once again it has been an absolute pleasure and an honor thank you so much for coming on the thank show. you thank you for having me it was a beautiful conversation <laughs> and a huge thank you to you we know that there are tons of options out there and having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us we hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we have. We'd love for you to contribute by sending us a voicemail or an email from our website or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or any other podcasting platform that supports them. Karen and I love hearing from those that are moved to message us. It truly does fuel our passion. You are the reason we do this show. And knowing what you like and don't like help us craft the very best show we can so that we can help raise the vibration of the planet together. Well, that's all for now. We will see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. <laughs>